One of the most rewarding excursions you can take from Interlaken by train is a short journey over to the capital of the country, Bern. It's only 50 minutes away by train, and it's a very busy train line. You'll find that in the morning, there are as many as five trains an hour that connect directly from Interlaken over to Bern, and then the same thing coming home again later in the day. So this is a very easy and rewarding trip. The Bern train station is right next to the old town, so your walk through the historic zone begins the moment you arrive. They've done a lot of work in rebuilding and reconstructing the Bern train station to make it a very modern facility. There's lots of shops and restaurants right in the train station, even before you set foot in the old town. Switzerland is famous for its excellent trains. Stations are an extension of that. They're like a mini city. You can even take a shower in here in their clean restrooms. It's relatively safe, but you always have to look out for your valuables. And just in front, there is the modern canopy for the tram station. However, you're not going to need to ride a tram when you're visiting Bern. Everything is very compact in the old town, and you can easily see it on foot in a couple of hours. What we're going to do is we'll, we'll walk right down the main street, which leads from here. This is a convenient place to tell you some about the city, just for a couple minutes. Bern means bear. That's the mascot of the city. And uh, there's a little bear zoo at the far end of town. But really, in 1405, all of the wooden buildings burned down in a huge fire. And it was decreed that the new buildings would be made of stone. And so the whole city was rebuilt in the early and middle 1400s up through 1500, basically in a medieval style. And so therefore it has a, a very uniform and harmonious appearance to it, with the arcades covering the sidewalks, four miles of covered sidewalks. So rain or shine or snow, it doesn't matter. So the main thing is we're just gonna walk around, up and down, you've got your map, we're gonna wander, meander, we'll see the famous clock tower, and get a good overview for a couple of hours, and time for shopping. The main street proceeds directly from the front of the train station, right through the historic center. It's one street, about 10 blocks long, but it changes name several times. By the station, it's the Spittelgasse, then it becomes the Marktgasse, then the Kramgasse, then the Gerechtigkeitsgasse. Today, it's the main street of Bern, as it has been for centuries. This road is remarkable not only for the ancient buildings and arcades that cover both sides, but for the spectacular Renaissance fountains down the middle. Today, it's a popular shopping street with surprisingly modern shop interiors, and there's a slight curve with a long line of Baroque facades that combine to produce one of Bern's most impressive streetscapes. This Kramgasse and its buildings are part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site that encompasses the entire old city of Bern. A very impressive honor that UNESCO has designated all of the historic area as a World Heritage Site. This main street is about 330 meters long and lies at the very center of the old city. The famous clock tower and the arch at the end of the Market Street is the oldest building in town with an astronomical clock that still works after 500 years. Try and be at the clock four minutes before the hour to catch the whimsical parade of mechanical bears, armored knights, jester, lion, and father time celebrating the moment. There are two clocks on the tower. One is a standard timepiece and the other is an astronomical clock built in the form of an astrolabe. It represents the planets orbiting the sun. When the tower was built in 1218, it was part of the fortified gate of the medieval wall in the western portion running around Bern. As the city expanded in size, two other walls were built further out from the center, and this tower no longer was so important as a frontline defense of the city. Einstein lived on this main street for eight years while developing his general theory of relativity, and his house is now open as a museum. Three fountains decorate the street, 
The fountain in the center is the Simpson Brunnen, built in 1527 and decorated with a figure of Samson taming the lion. The Zeringer Brunnen fountain at the western end of the street is Burns' first figure top fountain, depicting an armored bear, Burns' heraldic beast. At the eastern crossroads, the Kreutzgassbrunnen was the model for all of the other obelisk fountains of Bern, built in 1778. The Kramgasse is one of Bern's more upmarket shopping streets. Among others, it features antiquaries, drugstores, bakeries, banks, jewelry shops, bookstores, art galleries, boutiques, restaurants, furniture stores, optician stores, watch shops, and wine cellars. Over the centuries, this street was slowly gentrified. In 2005, this street was thoroughly renovated and its cobblestone pavement replaced but it still looks very old. The word burn means bear, and this animal is the symbol and token of the city. At the end of town across the river, they have their famous bear pits. In recent years, the government has greatly expanded this bear habitat to make it really a pleasant place for the bears to live. Previously, it was not so nice. It was really just a bear pit a hole in the ground lined with cement and a couple of bears living there. Almost a cruel place to keep the bears. But now it's become a vast outdoor zoo and the bears seem to be enjoying it. They're having a great time. They've created this landscaping that comes down the side of the hill right down to the river and created several plunge pools for the bears to go swimming and walkways so that the public can see the bears and the bears can see the people. It's all very well planned and of course it's all very safe. They're not going to jump out at you, but you do get a chance to get very close to them. We happen to be here on an amazing day in which two young bear brothers had been reunited after being apart for nearly a year. For whatever reasons, they had been separated off to different cities and now they were brought back together again. These two siblings, about one year old, frisky and having fun and remembering each other and so happy to see each other. They had a great time tussling around, wrestling and playing and getting reunited. Wonderful to see how the powerful muscles and teeth of these beasts can be used for such gentle fun. Bears have been kept on display in the city for 500 years, most of that time in that small hole in the ground. In the 1990s, they made some effort to renovate the enclosures, but it wasn't sufficient. So this beautiful park was opened in 2009 on the steeply sloping land that comes down to the river. It really gives the bears an outdoor environment they can enjoy. It also gives the visitor a good reason to walk through the entire old town of Bern because the bears are located outside the old town across the river beyond the end of the main road, easily reached in a few minutes walk across the bridge. It's only about one kilometer from one end of the old town to the other, so the bears are easily reached. And then when you're done, head back into the old town along a slightly different route, heading for the great cathedral. Walking along Junkerngasse with more of these delightful arcades forming a cozy environment. Junkerngasse means nobility lane, and according to Wikipedia, it's the old city's best preserved street. It was home to some of the city's leading families and still has some palatial mansions along it. This building, the Erlockerhof, is the seat of government for the city of Bern and dates back to the mid-1700s, was originally the most significant private palace in the old town. Some of these buildings date back to the 1400s. Others are from the Renaissance and the later Baroque period. Another important building is the Gothic Cathedral with the nation's highest church tower at 328 feet, which you may climb for a bird's eye view of the historic center. Construction of the cathedral began in 1421 in the Gothic style. It is a three-nave basilica without a transept or aisles, 85 meters long and 34 meters wide. It's quite huge. 
The walls outside are supported by flying buttresses, and the majority of the building is constructed with local sandstone, and bricks were used for the ceiling, for the vaults. Called the Minster, or they'd say Münster, it was built by the city of Bern as a symbol of the growing power of this city-state. The interior was designed to awe the citizens as well as any foreign visitors who came by. There are several other lovely side streets that you should explore. We walked over to the Rothaus, which has a very impressive Rothaus Gasse, and walked along the Rothaus Gasse for a block, another well-preserved neighborhood, and another big church of St. Peter and Paul, immersed in these buildings that have really not changed a lot in the last centuries. The historic center of Bern is surrounded by a sharp curve in the Aura River, enclosing the space and encouraging growth in a compact arrangement of shops and homes that fit perfectly together. Then we took a little detour on Brunengasse. This too was a charming little street, very quiet, hardly any cars and nice shops, a few restaurants, some bars along the way, Chinese takeout, the old historic buildings and a lovely curvature to the lines of Brunengasse. And that reconnects once again with the Rathausgasse. We could learn a lot about how to build our modern cities by studying these organic growth patterns that have evolved over the past 900 years. Next, you'll come across Kornhaus Platz, which is a large plaza that was first built about 600 years ago. And it's always been one of the main plazas of the city, very large space. It's called Kornhaus Platz after the German word for grain or corn because a granary was built here in the 1700s and the plaza became a grain market. In the basement, the Kornhaus Keller restaurant offers delightful ambiance and excellent food, specializing in Swiss and Mediterranean cuisine. Continuing along Zeughausgasse, another busy commercial street with some modern stores, looks like a department store, some restaurants, there's a hotel, three hotels along Zeughausgasse, as we are making our way back towards the train station. We've been so busy sightseeing, we didn't take any time to sit down and have lunch. So now we are hungry. No, we're starving. And there's this great restaurant called Tibbets. It's part of a small chain of restaurants in Switzerland, and they've got a few branches in London and elsewhere, that's all vegetarian. And they've got this fabulous buffet. They call it the boat, and it's loaded with all sorts of great salads and beans and tempeh and tofus that'll tempt you and juices and the price is quite reasonable high quality freshly cooked food so this is where we had a great meal sit down relax unwind absorb the sights of burn before departing and heading back to Interlaken it could not be more convenient because Tibbets is located in the train station which is right on the edge of the old town so very easy for us to get to the train. We have a few minutes before catching the train to learn a little bit more about Bern. You see all of these trams, they go throughout the city. There's a big network, but it's not that big a city. The population is only 140,000. So it's the fourth largest city in Switzerland behind Geneva, behind uh, Basel, and behind Zurich. Of course, it's the national capital. They have a parliament, but Switzerland is a, a decentralized power. They, each of the states, they call them cantons, uh, has quite a bit of autonomy. And the parliament has less power than the states do. And they don't have a president as such. It's like the speaker of the parliament and, and selected and they take turns. It's not like a big presidential, big leadership thing, strongman politics. They don't have that here. It's more consensus politics, not only at the state level, but at the village level. Switzerland has like the old New England town meetings. And so each village has quite a bit of authority. That's one reason why they've never joined the EU. The villages in the valleys are pretty conservative. And they've managed to veto any joining of the EU. The businessmen all want to be in the EU. The, the yuppies, the professionals, they wish they were in the EU. 
but they can't get there because of this decentralized power structure. Anyway, it's been a great city for these 500, 600 years now. Well, okay, it's time to enter the station and find our train. The train station is quite large, but it's well laid out. It's got the escalators and signage to get you around. Get down to your platform on schedule and wait for the train. Very frequent train service between Bern and Interlaken. It's about three, four trains an hour. So it's a quick trip, 50 minutes by train, back to our home base at Interlaken. It's going to be another scenic journey on Swiss Rail. This episode on Bern is part of a longer series that we're presenting all about Switzerland based on a tour we conducted recently, two weeks in Switzerland. It's a great country to visit because of the diversity, the majestic scenery, the quality of life is superb and it's clean and friendly and no more expensive than most of Europe. So it's a great destination. Other video episodes from the tour will include Lucerne and Zurich. We'll be going on to Zermatt, Lugano, Locarno, and a lot of beautiful mountaintop scenery to share with you. So stay tuned and check out our YouTube channel and subscribe. We have a large series of movies about Interlaken and other parts of Switzerland on our website and our YouTube channel. Have a look.